Welcome to video 6 in my part 3 Java MTA course. In this video we're going to be looking at arrays, both one dimensional arrays and two dimensional arrays. And as always I'm going to go through the key information as quickly as I can and then give you questions to cement the knowledge that you've learned in the video. So let's get started. So the first thing that you need to know about arrays is what an array is. So in my previous videos we talked about data types and we talked about both primitive and reference data types. If you're unsure what those are, I would recommend you um, looking back at my previous videos to know those two terminologies. If you are aware what they are, um, then you're aware that if you assign one to a variable, then you only can assign it one value. An array allows us to store many values, but they must be of the same type. So there are two ways to create an array. The first way is to declare and initialize it on one line. So if we look here, this is an example of how we can create an array. So we've told it the data type. So in each of the values that's stored in this um, array, it's going to be a string. We then use this square brackets to tell the computer that it's going to be an array. We then give the name and then the curly brackets is what we insert the values here. So what this does is this creates or declares the array in memory and then initializes the values within that. So the first array will have three values. What you can also do is just declare the array and then initialize it later. So in this one here, we've declared the same array here. We've got the same data type, which is string. We use the same brackets to tell the computer it's an array. Um, but here we're saying we want to create some new space in memory and this space will store four values of string. Importantly, in both these examples, once you add, um, once you add the space to the array, you cannot add more values than the space you have allocated. So you cannot increase the space in your array. So for example, in the first one, we have three values here. We cannot add a fourth value. In the second one, we've created four spaces for our values. So we cannot create a fifth space. The computer will not allow us. In the second example here, we have the uh, initializing process here. So what we've done here is the array is an index based system. So what we, we, we do here is the zero one is the first value here. And then what we're inserting this string lesson into that position. So um, let's quickly talk a little bit more about that index. So to access the value of arrays, you need to use the index of the value. So for example, here in this first one, this string videos one, we've got the videos index zero is lesson one, the index uh, videos one is lesson two, and the videos index two is lesson three. So it's very important that in computer science and in most programming languages that you understand that when you're dealing with an arrays, the, the starting point is the zero index. That is our first value, not one. And it's important for the exam that you're aware of that. So now you have a good idea of what a 1D array is. A 2D array is very similar, but it allows you more control on how you organize your array elements. So um, this will make sense once you see an example. So importantly, a 2D array is created in the same way as a 1D array is. So if you can remember that structure, it, it will be used in almost, or it will be used in all arrays. So you can declare and initialize it on one line. So if you can remember that structure of that 1D array, it will help you. So if you got here, we're gonna use the double uh, values here. And the, one of the biggest differences is instead of having one brackets, we're having two brackets. And this is telling the computer it's going to be a 2D array. And then we still have the uh, video, which is the name that we're going to reference our array to. And then we're going to have these brackets. So we've got the first brackets here. But within those brackets, we've got these secondary brackets here. So this first one, this 1.1, 1 1.2, and 1.3, this is going to be our first array. We have a comma, and that 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 is going to be our second array. So again, it allows us to organize that data within the array a little bit better. 
Importantly, you need to understand how to access these arrays using these indexes. So it's a good idea to think of this array, these 2Ds arrays, as a table. Now you, the, you see these brackets here, you should think of them as the row. So you have the row first, so this the, the row 1 will be the first array, row 2 will be the second array, and then if you add a comma and added another curly brackets, that would be the third row. And then within that row, you have columns. So you have uh, the column 2 would be the purple one. So it would be the 1.2, 2.2. Importantly, it's index base. So as we talked about last time, the index base starts from 0. So row 1 would actually be the index 0. Row 2 will be the index 1, column 1 would be 0, column 2, 1, and column 3. So it, it, you just need to, again, remember that index, and it starts from 0. So knowing this, knowing that this piece of code can easily be transformed into that table, and it's a good idea to think of it like that table, these values you should be able to work out now. So if we've got that uh, video 0, and that, uh, so row zero, column zero. So we've got our row zero, which is the first one, so it means it will be this array. And then we've got the column zero, which will be the first one. So that will be 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, the second one, we've got video. This will be, again, the first value is the row, and we want row one. So that'll be row two. Um, sorry, we want indexed one which will be row two, and then we want index two, which will be column three. So that will be 2.2. Oh no, that wouldn't be 2.2, that should be 2.3. That was an error in my uh, PowerPoint. So that will be 2.3. And then the next one, let's hope there's not any more errors in there. We got the video, um, and we've got video one, which will be row two. And then we're using index zero, which will be column one. So that should be 2.1 there. So hopefully from that, you can start seeing how the index links up in a 2D array. It is a really good idea to try and think of them as tables, as it's not easily, it's not natural um, to kind of easily get your head around how this works in this style, it, we're much more familiar with the table format. So it is a good idea to just, while you're getting started, to think of it as tables. The last thing that you need to be aware of before we go into the questions is just how to access all of the array. Now, as we know from our previous re uh, video about reference types, we know that an array is a reference type. And so because it's a reference type, we cannot directly print an array because it's a, a reference type. So if you do it, if you print this out, so we've created our array here, and we're just trying to print the whole array, it's actually going to print something like this. So it's going to print out the object that you've created. It's not actually going to print the values. So it's important to be aware that you can't directly print out an array. So how do you do it? Well, there are two methods that you need to know. So, um, and this is just for the exam. There are other methods out there, but to really, for in the exam, the ones that they will introduce you to are the array to string method. So you can convert the, the whole um, array into a string. So for example, like this, you're using this array to string, and it's just converting this whole array into a string and that will um, print it out. However, this will not work for 2D arrays. So for 2D arrays, you must use the for loop. Now in my next, my part four, we're gonna be looking more about the for loops. So if you don't recognize how this for loop works, don't worry because we're gonna be talking more about it later on. But it is important to know that you cannot just print out a array, you have to either convert it to a string or you have to loop round it. So for example here, if you have just one array, you can loop round the video 
and each value is then put into the variable x um, and then we can print out that x value. Again, the 2D array gets a lot more complicated because you have to loop around each individual array. So for that, we need two for loops. So again, you will never have to program this in the exam, um, but you have to be aware that if you have a 2D array, you'll need to loop around it. And again, in, pre and in future videos, we're going to be looking at the for loop in much more depth depth so it could be a good idea to have a look at that for loop um, for loop video and then come back and see if you can work out the structure of this array but the important thing is that you just can't call it you will have to loop through the values in the array to print them out okay so I've thrown a lot of information at you um, let's see how much can stick so what I would like you to do is I would like you to pause the video and tr um, try and answer these questions. And then we'll go, go through them line by line to see how many you've got right. So hopefully you've paused the video and um, let's go through it. So what we want to know is what will be the output of the code below. So we've got a load of print uh, commands here and we were using a number of different arrays. So the first array is a text, it will have two values. And the first, uh, the, the second value or the index one will have goodbye. Um, so if we look at print, um, print one, our text one, this should print goodbye. So the first uh, print value will be goodbye. And then we've got here, so print out video uh, videos, and then we're using index zero, which is remember the first array, and then we're looking at the first uh, index. So that's do you remember the index starts from zero, so this will be index zero, and this will be index one. So that value should be 1.2. Uh, the third one, number two, um, we are going up here. So remember, again, we have an array that's an in, uh, the data type integers, um, but the index is two, so the index starts from zero, so you've got zero, one, two. So this one will be eight. So let's look at the next one. So again, we're printing out the videos array. So here we've got the videos, we've got two arrays, and we're going to be printing out the first one. So again, this is zero, and then this is number one. Okay, but so it's going to try and print out a whole array well, we know we can't do it. So if you try and print this whole array out, you're not going to get any values. You're going to get that that object that you created. So it will be something like D at 279. So this will not print out anything that's useful to us. It will print out the whole array that's represented as that object. And the last one, uh, text zero. So again, what we have here with we're using the array here, text, and we know we've created two values, um, but then we've initialized on line 10 the goodbye on value or indexed one, but we haven't initialized anything on text zero. So when we create it, the computer will automatically set everything to null. So there will be something there, but what will there be there will be null. Okay, so that's all the displays. Um, what line of code does not display a value? Well, 16 doesn't uh, display a value. Um, it displays that whole array um, object. So line 16 is probably the, the most likely correct answer. Although if you say line 17 and saying it displays a null value, that is also a good answer. Um, what kind of brackets do you need to declare an array? Well, to declare it, to make that array available in space, you need those square brackets. And then what kind of brackets do you need to initialize a value? So to initialize, which is assigning that space in memory the values, you use the curly brackets. So hopefully you've got all those questions right. If you got confused with anyone, I would suggest try and re-watch some of the key information and then redo the questions. 
if you got them all right, um, well done. Um, the last thing that you can do just to make sure that you cemented all of the knowledge in the video is are you able to create a string array with four values? So if you can do that, then brilliant. Um, if you can tell me what are the two methods to print out an array, even better, then I think you've covered all the material that you need for the exam. And then if you are able to create a for loop that is able to loop round a 2D array, then I would say that you're doing much better and you're actually going far beyond the knowledge that you'll need for the MT exam. Again, if you found this video useful, um, please subscribe. We're going to be doing videos every week and we're going to go through every aspect of the MTA course. Again, if you found it, this video useful, um, like it. And if you found the answers to these questions, please leave a comment below for other learners. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.